I never expected to see a Final Fantasy game like Rebirth ever again. It rekindles the feeling of discovery we haven't felt in the series since its PlayStation Golden era, where protagonists led us across gorgeous worlds filled with endless possibilities. Final Fantasy X was a relatively straightforward affair, embracing a gameplay formula which would evolve to a standstill with Final Fantasy XIII before XV tried, and failed, to recapture the same magic. Now comes Rebirth, a reimagining of the 1997 classic that expands upon and recreates its finest qualities, including its memorable open world. The second entry within an ambitious trilogy, it is both a bold retelling and a fundamental re-examination of what it means to be a Final Fantasy game in the modern era. Taking us on a journey that ignites nostalgia as much as it inspires innovation, it uproots its very foundations in pursuit of something better. It's a staggering achievement all told, and one that mirrors many other contemporary grades, namely Breath of the Wild which did something similar when it released in 2017. Nintendo looked at the landscape of open world games, as well as how The Legend of Zelda had evolved over the years, and considered how both needed to change. Link appearing every few years with a new visual aesthetic and a handful of new dungeons just wasn't enough anymore, while the overlong introductions and glaring tutorials seemed out of place in a medium that had moved on. We still loved these games, but Nintendo was entering a grim period of diminishing returns where it needed to change course. I still hold these classics close to my heart, but after the masterful brilliance of Breath of the Wild, we'd be foolish to go back. It took the tenants established by Ubisoft, Rockstar, Sony, and countless other studios, and created an open world where freedom, discovery, and exploration were paramount. The end goal of defeating Calamity Ganon sat on the horizon for hundreds of hours, and it was up to the player when and why they decided to finally approach him. But despite what many perceive as a monumental change in the Zelda formula, Breath of the Wild is more true to its origins than any game before it. Link awakens in a new world and is tasked with saving the realm through any means necessary. Skill comes through both experience and the tools you stumble across along the way. Even if traditional dungeons themed around a specific item are nowhere to be seen anymore, you still have access to a number of abilities that grow into essential parts of your repertoire that Link just can't do without. I love Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time, but Breath of the Wild is as quintessential as Zelda has ever been, and if my intuition serves me well in the years to come, ever will be. It captures the magic of why we love the series so much, while never being afraid to interrogate its core components. Rebirth follows in these footsteps. After I finished Remake, I feared how Square Enix would depict the world outside of Midgar. There was a tangible risk it would produce a bloated open world filled with content hardly worth your time, or perhaps it would butcher classic locations with tired gimmicks or a bizarre misunderstanding about what made them so damn special in the first place. Thankfully, it avoids all of these pitfalls, and almost feels like a PS1 game in PS5 clothing, as it lets us roam free in a massive world, but is always curated and focused in a way that only the greatest of RPGs can lay claim to. Each region is large, but never too huge to feel superfluous or overreaching. A handful of side quests help flesh out characters and culture, while small items of interest on the map offer up substantial lore and reasons to explore. By the time the narrative kindly ushered Cloud towards his next destination, I almost didn't want to leave, but the unfolding yarn was good enough that I didn't mind. Besides, Rebirth does a brilliant job of encouraging revisits in its later hours, with new quests and discoveries, just like older Final Fantasy titles like 8, 9, 10, and even the original 7, the world and characters who call it home continually grow alongside you. There are a few static things about it, turning each biome into a living, breathing space where you can fight monsters and feel your heartstrings gently plucked at. The stunning production value certainly helped too, as does the original game Rebirth liberally draws from. But there's also an evolution at its core that harkens back to the past, yet pushes into a future without fear. Funnily enough, the future looks an awful lot like the games I loved playing decades ago, but with a consideration for how the medium has grown in terms of narrative, technology, and the tools we use to engage with such virtual experiences. Rebirth is Final Fantasy coming full circle. In the past two decades, it has tried to recapture its golden era through experimentation and an uneven reliance on visual splendour over characters and mechanics, alienating fans as it strayed further and further from its initial greatness. Now we've come back around to honour where we started, and in turn embrace what's to come. Rebirth is Breath of the Wild, in that it builds a new foundation I cannot wait to see expanded upon in the years to come. It's a game I can't stop thinking about, even after sinking 85 hours into the damn thing. Partially because it lays out the potential of what's to come, and where Final Fantasy can go now it finally has a beating heart I can believe in.